Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Today we are making these solid granny squares for beginners. I'll be showing you how to change color and also how to continue using the same color. And there's no chain going up, so the chaining and the joining is invisible. And they look great on both sides. It's also super square, so it doesn't start going like tink, tink, tink as your granny square gets bigger, which you'll notice in some patterns they do. So great stash buster. You can use small amounts for the centers and your larger amounts for the larger rings around the outside, or your larger rounds. So it is a great thing. You can make as many as you want. Just make sure you make them all the same number of rows. So let's get started. To make the super easy solid granny square, you're going to need your yarn. I'm going to be using three colors for my granny square and just whatever you have laying around. You don't actually need too much, but these are just I have handy. You will need a needle for sewing in later. I'm going to be using this Knitter's Pride darning needle, so it's super easy to load. I will have a link for that in the description box below. Uh, stitch marker always handy. If you don't have a stitch marker, you can use a bobby pin or a safety pin or a paper clip or a, just a little piece of yarn. Crochet hook, whatever goes along with your yarn. The bigger the hook, the softer and more loose your stitches will be, so the softer your um, granny square will be. I'm using a six millimeter and you'll also need a pair of scissors. I am going to start with purple for my center and move my things out of the way. There's lots of ways of doing your granny square, but this is just how I do it and how I start. So you start by making a slip knot. You can make a slip knot any which way. I hold the tail over my hand and push the yarn onto my ring finger. I make an X around two or three fingers, doesn't matter, and then push the working yarn underneath that ring and pull it down and off my fingers. So there is our slip knot. You don't need a very long tail because we're going to work over it and cut it off. Put the loop onto your hook and chain three. So to chain you just push your hook onto your yarn, turn your hook so the hook part is facing down and drag it through that loop. So we're going to do that again for our second chain and again for our third chain. You can count your chains, you don't count what's on your hook, and you don't count the knot, you just count the V's in between. So there's one, two, three. So go into your first V, any which way, doesn't matter, and kind of hold your tail down along that U shape, or just down along the side of it, like that. Get your finger kind of in the center of that U, because we want to keep track of it. So I'm going to hold my finger and my thumb together to hold that open and grab my yarn and slip stitch to turn it into a ring. So just grab that yarn and bring it through both loops and without letting go, chain three. One, two, and three. Wrap your yarn and go right into the center of that ring where you've been holding it open. So you'll be touching that hook onto your finger pushing it in, grabbing the yarn and bringing it back, wrapping your yarn and taking off two, wrapping your yarn and taking off two. So that is your first double crochet and your chain three also counts as a double crochet. So this counts as two double crochets. Wrap your yarn again and make one more double crochet into the center of the ring, making sure you're holding that tail down and working over it. So there is two double crochets and a chain, counts as three double crochets. Chain two for your corner, one and two. Wrap your yarn and make three more double crochets into the center of the ring. If you're just learning your crochet stitches, I will have um, links to videos for each stitch in the description box below. So you can just go back and learn your stitches. So there's two double crochets and here is our third. Chain two for your next corner and grab your ring and grab your stitches and just separate them. Just pull that ring out and push your stitches down. So that gives you more space because you want all your stitches to be on the ring, not laying on top of other stitches you've already made. Wrap your yarn and make another set of three double crochets. So wrap your yarn and take off two, wrap your yarn and take off two. 
wrap your yarn and go in, grab your yarn and bring it back, wrap your yarn and take off two, wrap your yarn and take off two. So it's a double takeoff. And here's our third one, so that's our third double crochet. So again, I'm going to grab my ring, grab my stitches, and push my stitches back and kind of pull my ring out. So we've done three sides of our grinding square so far. So we have three more double crochets to make, but we first we need to do a chain two, one and two for our corner. That's what our corners look like with our two double crochets. Wrap your yarn and go into that ring. Grab your yarn and bring it back. Wrap your yarn and take off two. Wrap your yarn and take off two. So we're doing that two more times into the center of the ring, going over that tail. Not the end of the world if you don't go over your tail. You'll just have to sew it in with a needle later. So that's just being like me being lazy. And now we're going to keep, I'm going to make one more round of this color. So I am going to chain one and into the third V or the third chain up. So count those V's. There's one at the very bottom. One, two, and three. I'm going to push my hook into the center of that V and I'm going to poke two loops onto my hook. So two strands of yarn from that V are on my hook. I'm going to grab my yarn and bring it back. So I have two loops on my hook. I'm going to wrap my yarn and take off two loops. So that is a single crochet. So we join with a chain one and a single crochet and that leaves us in the center of that corner which will hide our join in the future. So chain three, one, two, and three and turn your work. We turn our work so that our square stays square. If we don't turn it starts twisting and looking a bit messy. The bigger it gets the messier it looks. So we will we'll just turn our work and that solves the problem. And into this corner here, just where we are, we are going to make one more double crochet. So wrap your yarn and go into that corner space. Grab your yarn and bring it back. Wrap your yarn and take off two. Wrap your yarn and take off two. Now into this same corner space, I'm going to put my stitch marker. So just slide your stitch marker on there. And that means that's where we're going to end our row. Now we have our three double crochets from the previous row, one, two, and three, and we're just going to go into each stitch making one double crochet. So just poke your hook into that little dimple. That's your first one. And you want two loops of the V on your hook. So if you tip it up, you can see the two Vs. Grab your yarn and bring it back. Wrap your yarn and take off two. Wrap your yarn and take off two. Do that again into the next one. So just into that dimple. You've got to always check that you got two loops one double crochet and again into the last one here. Poke your hook into the dimple, two loops on your hook, grab your yarn and bring it back, wrap your yarn and take off two, wrap your yarn and take off two. And we've gotten to our corner. Our corners are two double crochets, one, two, a chain two, one, two, and two more double crochets into that same space one and two. Now we have three more stitches, three more dimples, so we're going to make one double crochet into each of those little dimples. So wrap your yarn and go into the first one making a double crochet. Wrap your yarn and go into the second one making a double crochet. And wrap your yarn and go into the third one making a double crochet. So that got us across. So we have our three stitches from the previous round with three double crochets coming out of them plus our corner, two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. And we're at our next corner. So that is two double crochet, one, two, a chain two, and two double crochet. And if I'm going too fast, just pause the video and catch up. And then when you're caught up, press play again. That is totally a great way to do it. And now three double crochets into the next three stitches. One, two, three. That gets us to our corner. Corner is two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet, all into the same corner space. So there's two double crochet, there's a chain two, and here's my last two double crochet one and two. And then along this side, let me cut off that tail. We worked over it, 
So we can just cut that off so it can stay out of the way. Now into these three stitches. We have three dimples, but this last one is a chain, so it's kind of a bit of a hole instead of a dimple. That is just how it is, and don't worry about it. Just still work into that like the same. The three posts or three sticks from the bottom row need three double crochets on the row we're working on. So into each one of those dimples, a double crochet. Here's our second. And there is our third. I just go into that hole right there. There's still two loops on my hook, like that. And we put in the stitch marker so that we know that here we have to stop. Because sometimes it's easy to just keep going and then you're wondering what happened and why you went wrong. So that's why I put in the stitch marker there. It tells me to stop. And into that space where the stitch marker was, I'm going to make the last half of my corner or the first half, depending how you look on it, which is two double crochets, one and two. And I'm going to finish off this color now, so I'm going to do a chain two, one and two, and slip stitch to join. So I'm going to slip stitch to the third chain, one, two, three, or the third V up, making sure you count that little V at the bottom. It's half hiding, but it still counts. One, two, and three. Just push in your hook, and now we're just going to do a slip stitch. So bring the yarn back, turn your hook, and bring your yarn through. Chain one to make a little knot on your yarn and cut your yarn. Pull your hook up and your yarn out. Snug that down to secure and now we're going to work this tail along this corner so we don't have to sew it in later. So just through the back loop of that V, bring it through, bring it through the second back loop of that corner and I'm just going to do the next stitch here. We just do the back loop so we can still see our stitches. And now from the back side going up, I'm going to bring it back the opposite direction. Just like this. So now it's laying along my corner and when we work over it, we can cut it off after we do our next round. So that is the end of round two and you can go ahead and grab your next color. My next color is this Bougainvillea. And what we're going to do, we always want to work into the back of our stitches from the previous round. So flip your work over so these cute little V edge is not facing you. That's touching the work surface or the bottom of your work. And we're going to be working into these little dimples again, the little macaronis. So make sure you've flipped your work and don't go into the same corner that we finished on. So just pick a different corner. To join your yarn, just put your hook into a corner space. Put a loop of yarn on your hook, say four inches or so. Grab your yarn and bring it through. And slip stitch with both to join. So wrap your yarn and bring it through both strands. Now you drop your tail and you have joined your yarn. We're going to chain two more, one and two. If we join our yarn like that with a slip stitch with both strands, it ends up looking like three chains, which is also what a, can count as a double crochet. So we're going to do one more double crochet into that corner. And I'm going over my tail, which just means I'm holding it down on the back side of my work and just working over it. Now we're going to go one into each stitch, one double crochet all the way across, and we have seven double crochets this round. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. That's our chain over there. So that one looks a bit different, but it's still going to work. One double crochet into each of these double crochets from the previous round. We can go over our tail. I go over my tail about halfway. About like that. I want to work it back with a needle afterwards so it doesn't wiggle out in the future. So now I'm just going to drop it. And one double crochet into each of those dimples or stitches. Making sure you have both strands of the V on your hook. And work your way back towards that corner. Now our chain is different than our other stitches, but I just go into that little hole right there. 
You can go in anywhere, but that's the path of least, least resistance for me. So I just work into that hole, making a double crochet. Still looks the same. And now we're at our corner. So corners are two double crochets. One, two, chain two, and two more double crochets into that corner space. So that's got us around our corner. And now the same thing, one double crochet into each of these dimples going all the way across. When you get to your last stitch, actually I'll do the last stitch with you. So this is our last stitch. If you pull your work apart, you can see that that stick or that post doesn't have a double crochet coming from it. And because we turned our work, the stitch or the, the dimple is after the post. So this one here is your last stitch. So that is your last double crochet. And now we're at our corner. So corner, two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet, one into each stitch going across. Do your other corner, one double crochet into each stitch going across, and I'll meet you when you get to this corner. When you get to your corner, we have to do two double crochets into that corner space. We always want to start and stop in the center of a corner. And because I'm going to keep going, I'm going to do one more round with this color. I'm going to join with a chain one and a single crochet. So into the top of the chain three, or it looks like the top of the chain two. Put your hook in, two loops of yarn on your hook. Grab your yarn and bring it back. Wrap your yarn and take off two. So there's your single crochet. And chain three. One, two, three turn your work, one more double crochet into that corner spot, double crochet, so that's the first half of your corner, and now you want to put that stitch marker back on, just to remind you of what, where you have to think, that's your thinking marker, and now all the way across here, so for this round we're going to be making 11 double crochets, because there's 11 double crochets of the previous round, so just go along making one double crochet into each stitch going all the way across. I'll meet you at the corner. And make sure you get into your last stitch. It looks like it could just be the corner, but if you pull your stitches apart, you can see that there's an empty stitch just ahead of that post. So that one we have to do a double crochet into. And now you are at your corner, which is two double crochets into the corner space, one and two a chain two to get around your corner, and two more double crochets into that same space. One and two. So now you'll keep going around, making one double crochet into each of these 11 double crochets, and then your corner of two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets, another 11 double crochets along these stitches, and then a corner, and double crochets along these stitches, and I'll meet you when you get to your stitch marker. When you get back to your stitch marker, remember to go into that last stitch. This guy here, we have to go into him. So, and that's a chain, so it's just kind of, it looks different. It looks like a bit of a hole. Just go into that guy. Now we can take out our stitch marker. And here is our corner space. We're going to finish our corner with two double crochets. One and two. If you're changing your yarn, you can just do a chain two and a slip stitch. If you're not change, changing your yarn, you can, do a, you can do a chain one and a single crochet to join. I am going to be finishing this color, so changing my yarn. So I'm going to do a chain two and a slip stitch. Two loops on my hook and slip stitch to join chain one to secure my yarn, cut your yarn, pull your hook up and your yarn through and snug that down to secure. So now I'm going to work in my tail back and forth around this corner. Like that. This purple one we can cut off because we worked it back and forth on the top of that corner. And this pink one, I'm just going to weave back along that way, so I'm just going to get my needle. And because it's really a short tail, I didn't leave enough yarn, to be honest, I am going to 
skip one of those strands just so it holds the yarn on that side and wiggle my needle back down and through the fat part of all of those and poke my I'm going to thread my needle after I have that woven in. So I've woven the needle, then I threaded it, and now I'm going to bring it through. So that's an easy cheat if you make your tails too short. Just get your needle thread, get your needle going before you thread it. And now that's finished. We only have our one tail left, which we can cut off after our next round. So I hope that was easy for you. And now one more row on our granny. My next color is going to be orange and again I'm just going to pick a different corner like maybe this corner here. Just put your hook into the corner space put a loop of yarn on your hook and drag it through and slip stitch with both strands to join. Now you can drop your tail and chain two more, one and two. If you're attaching your yarn in a different way, do a chain three. One more double crochet into this corner. And now we're going to do double crochets, one into each stitch, all the way over until we get to our corner. And because the last row had 11 double crochets, this row will have four more, so we will have 15. So wrap your yarn and go into each of these stitches making a double crochet, making sure you're also getting into the very last stitch of this row, which looks a bit different because it is our chain. I'll see you at the corner. So make sure you go into each stitch and working over your tail. So now I have one more stitch to go into for this chain. So I'm just going to go in to that little hole. It looks a bit different, but if you count your stitches, or you can line them up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, that lines up. But here is where it would get messed up because it looks like those are too close together, but that's just because of where the chain is. So don't worry about it. That is normal, and now you're going to do your corner two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. So keep going around. You're going to be putting one double crochet into each stitch. Now it's going to be easy because our chain was here. The rest of the stitches look like stitches and corners are two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. One into each stitch, two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet, one into each stitch and I will meet you when we get back to the join. After you've gone into your last stitch, there. We're going to finish our corner, so that's two double crochets, one and two. So to finish off your color, you do a chain two and a slip stitch. If you're going to keep going, you do a chain one and a single crochet to join. So for me, chain two and slip stitch to join. So you can keep going, making your granny square as big as you like, or stop sooner and make it as small as you like, and as many of them as you like. Now we can just do our tails a little bit on the back side. So this one we worked in and back, so this one can get cut off. Where we finished our yarn color, we can get cut off, we can cut it off. Where we join a new yarn color, these are the ones where we have to sew them back in. So I just drop, I don't go into the first stitch, I don't go in over there. I skip the first one and go into the rest of them. Just slide your needle down along in there and then thread your needle and pull it through. And that's great. Now we can cut that one off as well. And there we have it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please like, subscribe and share and stay hooked.